Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching in the world. This is the Red Horde. I'm going to continue the theme. I had the last episode last week focus on the MK Dons. I actually had uh, some initial interest and then after the game, uh, everybody stopped watching it. So I'm going to get this one out early. Uh, i going to talk about AFC Wimbledon. Who are you? And more importantly, do we hate you? Let's get into it. This is the Red Horde. All right, AFC Wimbledon. So you're up on Saturday the 12th. The nicknames for you, the Dons or the Wombles. I'm sorry, the Wombles. Right there, that's a hint. Hint number one, that we don't really hate AFC Wimbledon. How can you hate a team that calls itself the Wombles? It sounds like an Australian marsupial, um, or at least a verb for an Australian marsupial. The koala wombled up the tree. Uh, it's great. Love it. So that's check mark number one, at least as far as being, meh, we're kind of neutral on you. So location of AMC Wimbledon, well, you should get it from Wimbledon. Uh, London Borough of Merton, it's in London Southwest, uh, population 215,000 and change, uh, 8.9 million in all of London. Uh, the stadium, well, the, the stadium now uh, is called Cherry Road Records Stadium, uh, formerly Plow Lane, Plow Lane, Plow Lane, Plow Lane. We're going to go with that. It's 200 meters east of where the old stadium was. Uh, that old stadium now a, a Safeway since the team relocated uh, the former Wimbledon FC relocated to the MK Dons and became Franchise FC. So the current stadium opened in 2020. It has a capacity of 9,215. Uh, average attendance for it last season, 7,604 for the Wombles, the Dons. Uh, that put them fifth in League Two. Distance from the race course, 204 miles or 328 kilometers, and that's about a four and a half hour drive. As far as turnover, that being important, because if you have turnover, you have the capacity to end up bringing in players. A surprisingly good 8,061,000 pounds and some change. That's impressive, for a, especially for a trust-owned franchise. The fans have started this one up. And then the kit, you know what? Another reason why we can't really hate on Wimbledon. The kits are glorious, especially that third jersey. I don't know what you call it. Azure, Indigo. I'm going to put them up there, but you've got the blue and yellow home jersey. You've got the, the white away jersey. Um, you've got those sick third jerseys long-standing uh, sponsor as far as the front of the kit so hey kudos to the Wimbledon for doing it right with the kit uh, as far as the bookie odds at the start of the season had the AF had the Dons AFC Wimbledon uh, at 14th so a middle one-third club uh, expected to be in the mix in the mix but unlikely to end up being in the hunt for promotion uh, the last match that we had with them while well, we got to go into the wayback machine here 22 years, 5 months, 21 days ago. That's a total of 8,206 days, if you're curious. And that was a National League competition. Uh, it was a one nothing win away uh, back in, well, it was the Conference League back then. Uh, and AFC, though, advanced through the playoffs that season. And, well, we lost because we know we put 15 years of time in. So that's the history and the story with them. There's other connections with AFC Wimbledon, uh, most notably Ollie Palmer. Uh, he was a 300,000 quid transfer uh, in the January transfer window in 2022. Uh, played 41 games for AFC Wimbledon. So obviously there's a connection there. So last season's performance, how did they end up doing? 21st place, uh, two positions away from relegation, five points clear. They had 11 wins, 15 draws, 20 losses. Not the most productive season, but things are expected to be a little bit better this year. Now, in the MK Dons, for, fortunately, I guess, we, we covered the story, at least fortunately as far as the history, unfortunately for the people who had to suffer through the toils. Looking at, at it from the Wimbled, AFC Wimbledon perspective, uh, AFC Wimbledon, as soon as the commission that determined that they would permit the franchise relocation from Wimbledon to, the, to Milton Keynes, there was an immediate response uh, in creating a Phoenix club. And in fact, they started uh, with that fan lead trust and got the team going in 2002, 2003. Uh, and from there, they climbed the ladder in a hurry. Six promotions, like not consecutively, but 
over since 2002, 2003, six promotions, got them all the way up to League One. Uh, they did have a relegation two seasons ago that brought them back into League Two where they sit right now. But they went on a record. They put on 78 consecutive league games without a defeat between February 2003 and December 2004. So, but that's still an impressive 78 consecutive league games without a defeat. Like that's bonkers. So team statistics, um, lots of overhaul with the team. So it's tough to take anything from what happened last year. It's interesting that they conceded twice as many goals in the second half of the game than in the first half of the game. So for a team like Wrexham, who is a second half performer, and a team like Wimbledon, who at least last year struggled in the second half, you'd think that, well, that's the opportunity for us to make hay, as it were. Uh, last year, they were average in goals scored per match, but they did struggle a little bit keeping the ball out of the net, well, and especially in the second half. Um, Everything other than that was essentially average. I can bring up the stats here and it's team shots, conversion, fouls, goals scored, wins, draws. Just a, a lot of yellow, which demonstrates middle of the pack. Um, but it appears where the difference was and why they ended up in 21st was that challenge in being competitive uh, in the second half, that increase in conceded goals. So the gaffer, 40-year-old John Jackson. Uh, not a lot of data. In 2021, he became a caretaker for League One Charlton Athletic, uh, but he was ultimately dismissed uh, after that short stint. Uh, Charlton finished 13th, so maybe a little bit odd there because uh, you think he must have done an adequate job. They, they didn't fall off the map. But this is his second season now with the club. He was hired uh, after the club was relegated two seasons ago, and, and that's where he's at. So as far as key players, well, here we get into it. Four of the 11 starters that they had in their first game uh, were with the club last year. David's, Davison Pierce, Ogundere, Ogundere, and and Little, well, at least for a bit. So they've, they've brought in a lot of players. Uh, Alex Bass is on loan from Sunderland. He's their goalkeeper. Jake's, Jake Reeves at center midfield was brought in from Stevenage. Ryan Johnson from Stockport County. James Tilly from Crawley Town. Josh Newfill from Luton Town. Armani Little from FGR. Well, he played with them for a little bit, but really he came in in the window. O Omar Bugiel. Uh, from Sutton United, Joe Lewis, massive, massive turnover. So I don't know what you can do with the stats from last year because this is an overhauled team. And I guess that's why there's an expectation they're going to move up to the middle of the table. So lots to go through, a little bit difficult on this one because the stats are kind of all over the place, not being in League 2, but let's get into it. So let's go to the forward position. You have Josh Davidson, sorry, Josh Davison. He had 37 games last year. Uh, one of the only players that played at Wimbledon last year. Not a lot of stats on footy stats to give insight, but he did have nine goals in 37 games. That's only 0.25 goals per 90 minutes. So suggest um, being 23, he's, he's, he's going to likely get surpassed by some of the other forwards that we go through. So let's see who we think is going to be there. Um, Omar Bugiel, 28, he transferred from League Two rival Sutton United this summer. Um, I would expect him to be a top target. Uh, he hasn't performed well yet, but very positive looking stats once you get past his goals per 90. He's only got a 0 0.20 goals per 90 minutes, but he's got a lot of shots per 90. He's in the 61st percentile. His conversion rate and his shot accuracy is really high. They're bo both at 89, per he's at the 89th percentile. So that's a guy that you suggest will bury his chances if given the opportunity. You'd think he's probably going to get the opportunity here. So I'd suspect that if, if you're gonna pick somebody who might end up carrying the team, it's more likely I would suggest to be Omar than it would be to jo be Josh Davison. You've also got another transfer from the January window last year in Al Hamadi. He's only 21. Uh, he appeared in 21 games for Wimbledon. He had 10 goals. Um, that's a 0.64 goals per 90. Um, he came off the bench in the first game and just for 35 minutes. But you think at 21, he's going to get some more experience. He's, his statistics dem definitely s demonstrate, at least preliminarily, that he's got the opportunity to fill the net, being at that 0.64 goals per 90 at 21. That's an impressive rate. Um, they've got... They had two white wing, right wingers to start, and, and I'm not sure exactly how that worked. James Tilly, who's a Crawley Town transfer, Josh Newfell, who's a, a young Luton Town transfer. I suspect one of them was in the midfield, but I didn't watch the game. But anyway, with Mr. Newfell, 23, he appeared in 30 games in League Two. Uh, he, he only had two goals. He didn't have any assists. That's uh, 
0.09 goals assist. That's his contribution rate per 90, which as a, as a forward, even on the right wing, that's not that impressive. It's 11th percentile for goal contribution, despite 72nd percentile in matches played in 68th and minutes. So you'd expect something better. Um, but his assist ratio was below 12% last year. The upside that he has on his statistics, he appears to be a good crosser, if not exceptional. 71st percentile with his successful crosses. Shows maybe that the issue was, was not his passing last year, but maybe it was finish uh, from the people that were in the middle. So you'd expect, though, if you, you look at somebody like Josh and you look at somebody like Omar, who's, who's got the, the high conversion rate, those are two statistics that you, 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 cross, your, you, you, you cross your eyes? No, you scratch your head and you think there could be something there as far as that combination that could work. Um, not very solid in the, the ground duels was Josh Newfield, but you know what? He, he's, there's some optimism there. James Tilly, he's the Crawley Town transfer, League Two. Uh, more positive contributions at 25 than Josh Newfield, who I just went over. He had uh, tw at 23, he had 0 .20 goals and assists per 90, so that's, his contribution rate's a little bit higher. Um, that put him in the middle of the league last year, 77th percentile in goals uh, per 90 minutes. Shots and, tar shots and shots on target were both in the 80th percentile. And he had average defending stats that were in the middle of the pack. So not sure if there's as much room for growth there statistically. You look at what Josh Newfill has provided and, and you think you know those crosses could end up working um, if he's got somebody who can end up finishing. James, a little bit less development on as far as being uh, the, the individual stats, but he's proven himself to get a little bit more around the net as far as finishing. So um, there's some hope and optimism there, but nothing really definitive and lots of options. I'm sure that for, for the Wombles fans, the Dons fans, they'll be um, assessing on any given Sunday, any given Saturday, uh, who's going to be playing and who's not. In the midfield, you've got Jake Reeves. Um, he was subjectively called by, by one person that I follow as their best signing from the transfer window. So there has to be something that's subjective about that that doesn't show up in the statistics because when I look at his statistics, he is the definition of League 2 average. Um, he sits in the 36th to 65th percentile in essentially all statistics. Defensively, there's a lot to be desired. Um, he's horrible in ground duels. He's in the 10th percentile, 34th percentile in aerial duels, 54th percentile at getting dribbled past. Um, there is one positive in his statistics, and that's that he's 73rd percentile in interception. So what does that tell me about Jake? He's probably good in space, um, but just not good in tight. Um, I, I, I'd suggest that's what it says because um, he's able to read well and get those interceptions, but he's just not good with the duels and, and finding the passes. The other option to Jake Reeves in the midfield, uh, Armani Little, 26. He played with Forest Green Rovers last season and then joined Wimbledon midseason. He's the opposite of Jake in that he's impressive statistically. Um, maybe average defensively, 36th percentile to 72nd percentile in most of his statistics that I'll, I'll put up here. But he does have superior like stats when it comes to his crosses, uh, 89th percentile and 93rd percentile, which again, you have somebody like Jake Reeves, who if you put with Josh Newfill, who's there with Omar to end up cashing in individually, they all demonstrate that they've got some rather scary stats if they can figure out their game. So maybe best that we get them in the second game of the season because uh, there's some synergies there that uh, I'm curious to see how they develop over the season. Um, the other midfielder, or the, sorry, Armani Little, we're just returning back, going to his other stats, 71st percentile in passing, 72nd percentile in assists. So again, um, looking for synergy, um, lots of overhaul. Hopefully they don't find it by Saturday. Defense, um, fascinating stuff, sort of. Joe Lewis is on loan from an interleague competition, Stockport. I always find the inter-competition loans to be awkward. Um, why would you want to loan somebody within your division? Find them a spot or get them down a division uh, for more playing time, but to send to competition always seems weird. But they have him from Stockport. They've got old guard in, air, in Alex Pierce, who's at 34, um, and Lee Brown in reserve. And then there's a whole lot of academy players, like seven of them. Uh, all 24 and under, sniffing around. Uh, Ogandara is one that I suggested who featured in the last game. But it's difficult to pull the statistics for that under 24 crowd because they just don't have a large enough sample size 
to really get into it. So let's look at who we've got defensively then for AFC Wimbledon. You've got Alex Pierce, 34, again mentioned he's a returnee. Uh, this is his second season. Another aerial beast, which you'd expect and desire in the center backs. Uh, 20 games last year, he was in the 94th percentile per 90 minutes. Uh, that's impressive. He was never dribbled past, That's like, not, and he was 99th percentile in clearances. Like That is the definition of what you want in your center back. Here. Um, so maybe not so direct in this game, looking for stuff to come over. I don't know how you address that because he's good in the air. Um, weaknesses potentially, uh, not a lot of interceptions. So through balls, that sort of stuff might be the opportunity and not a lot of tackles. But if the ball is near him, it tends to be gone soon. Uh, he just appears to be a no-nonsense blue collar sort of center back. Uh, and there's a lot of reason why you'd be all for that. Ryan Johnson, 26, he came in from Stockport, a, a sort of a carbon copy of Alex Pierce that we just went over, except maybe better in the interceptions. No nonsense defensively, 98th percentile in aerial duels, 95th percentile in ground duels, 91st percentile in clearances, um, 98th percentile in goals conceded per 90 minutes. So those are all stats that say individually he's good, and the team seems to perform well when he's there, which intimates some sort of positional awareness to make sure that there's no mistakes that uh, might not show up on the individual stats. But not a lot of tackles, which again, maybe not a bad thing because tackles often are a sign of desperation. Um, he just seems to be statistically, when I looked at the stats, as an in-control defender. And then the other defense defender that you've got, other than the seven academy players, Lee Brown, 32. He's a returnee, uh, second season. Not nearly as solid as Alex and Ryan as a defender. Uh, not impressive in his aerial stats, 60th percentile in his duels. Uh, quite bad in his interceptions at 45th percentile. So uh, I'd like to see Lee Brown in the lineup if I could. That'd be great. Uh, but if you've got Alex Pierce and Ryan Johnson back there, you know you're going to not want to go after those two. You're looking for whether it be Lee Brown or one of the, one of the academy players that's filling in. That seems to be where the potential weakness is with this team. Um, as far as the keeper, you've got a true goalie duel going on there, and I don't know what they're going to do. They've got uh, Alex Bass, who's uh, on loan from Sunderland. He's 25. But they also have their journeyman longstanding uh, Kiwi, Nick Zanev, who had 44 appearances for the team last year. He was basically the guy. Uh, to be fair, Zanev, in his, in his, he had 39 league appearances, 3,510 minutes average performer he was like literally 51st percentile and save percentage 66 percentile and conceded goals per 90 minutes and so not bad but not great and so i think that's probably why in the first game they went with alex bass see what he's going to end up doing um and and it's tough to compare because bass only had five matches that i can find last year uh, one league cup one fa cup and in three in the premier league two so the u23 division so a little bit difficult to predict exactly what the goalkeeper situation is going to be there. And so I realize that is a, a lot of statistics. Just to look subjectively then at AFC Wimbledon, you've got that four and a half hour drive if you're if you're heading over to London to end up taking this one in. So it is one of the, the longer journeys that the team will go on. As far as how to compare them to North American teams, I guess if this was the NHL, they'd be maybe the, the Winnipeg Jets being a, a team that was moved away to Phoenix and then another team rose from the ashes in the current iteration of the Winnipeg Jets. In the NBA, maybe the Minnesota Timberwolves, you've got the Houston Texans in the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball, I don't know who you'd go with. Um, the Washington Senators, now the Washington Nationals, would probably be the Major League team. You can't hate on a team when a community gets their, their club ripped from them and then they find a way to rise from the ashes. And especially in the way that they did, there's got to be some sentimental connection, I'd suggest, from Wrexham and, and, and AFC Wimbledon. So I hope we still beat them. But I'm not going to hate on AFC Wimbledon for the year, and especially when they play the Dons, I hope they bury them. Um, as far as if we were to compare a AFC Wimbledon to a food, because I did that with MK Dons, I'm going to call these guys a puff pastry. Um, not something you really are chasing after when you're looking for a delicious treat and when you're really excited but how can you hate a puff pastry so you've got the wombles the australian marsupials i'm gonna have that vision in my head that's who we play on saturday 
Looking forward to it. Join the live chat. We've got people in now. I think we've got like eight countries that have been covered in the live chats. It's starting to pick up a little bit of steam. It's an opportunity just to stay connected and express your opinion as the game's going on live and get involved in the chat that way. Subscribe to this, please, if you wouldn't mind. Take the time to hit that button. Helps the algorithm. Like this, like it as well. Helps the algorithm. Trying to increase the numbers. My watch hours are great. Uh, as far as the analytics are concerned, it's it's the subscribers. People are giving me great comments, and I'm very happy to provide these. Uh, I look forward to it because I'm learning a ton as we go through it. So join the chat, subscribe. This is the Red Horde. We'll see you on Saturday.